The man that keeps taking down the titles, Tom Cousins, is in another quarter final. 50 minutes, a race to seven, and Aaron Davies is the opponent. Simon Webb and Nick Finn with you on commentary for this one. And Tom is the big favourite once again. Yeah, indeed, with the um, with the bookmaker too. I mean, he's an odds-on favourite to win the comp, and probably rightly so. He's, um, he just keeps doing it. But uh, he's got another tough opponent. I mean, Aaron is granite. He just um, he, he leaves everything out there. He gives you 110% every time he's at the table. So it's going to be a tough one for Tom. But, uh, Tom, a rare dry break to open things. And Aaron with the first chance at the table. The one thing that Aaron will know is that he needs to take every chance he gets Always going to be a problem here with the yellow at the bottom of the table. So it's just really about the decision whether he wants to go game here or whether he wants to just try and tie things up. Looks like he's going to try try and tie things up at the top of the table. The eight ball is eight balls in a bit of a mess. Maybe just touch loose there I don't think he wanted to give Tom any sight of, of any reds I mean the problem is for Aaron here the reds actually do all have a pocket apart from the eight ball apart from the eight of course yeah yeah I think I uh, don't think that was the best of shots for Aaron but it's a terrible layout I think the biggest thing for Aaron in this match is dealing with the fact that he's playing Tom Cousins now Aaron should know that he's one of the best players in the world and he's capable of beating anybody because he has done but for whatever reason he's had a few matches now with Tom over the course of you know the ultimate four four years and he's yet to to taste victory I think he's I think he's five matches in he has four drawn one but the ones he's lost has not been close apart from one six red shootout in the last man standing where he couldn't beat 36 seconds or is there a mental block? Yeah, that can happen as well, can't it? The players get it stuck in their head that they've got this obstacle. I mean, if you're going to have a, a block against anyone, then it's likely to be Tom, because he's just such a dominating force. But it's a nice developing shot. Now Aaron really forced into pulling the trigger here. After playing that shot, he's still got the problem at the top of the table, the yellow and the eight ball tied up whilst it was an insurance policy for him earlier it's now a bit of a headache so he's left an angle on the yellow to middle just send the cue ball up if he can send it into the gap of the eight ball and the yellow he's just looking now or even going cushion first and coming into the back of it I quite like going into the gap because you're pretty much guaranteed to leave yourself on something as long as you don't hit it too hard. It's going cushion first and coming behind it. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I think he's just straight enough to pull this back. Yeah. So he's okay. That was a nice shot. This is a good effort in the opening frame here for Aaron. Just needs to put the finishing touches to it. Yeah, he can he can nip this in and just pull the cue ball towards the red now he's got lots of angle this will be an interesting shot what does he do here I don't think he can play this and hold no. to have a sight of the eight ball here no. I don't think so either I mean he, he could kill the cue ball and just leave it below the right middle pocket but um, yeah like that but he's missed the pot I know it's early but I think that could be a huge moment in this match I, I really do just for everything I just said about the kind of is there a mental block well I'm not saying he missed that because he's playing Tom Cousins but you'll have time to think about it while Tom mops these up and as I said he really does need to take every opportunity you always do when you're playing Tom that's one that's got away already. It looks like it's going to get away. Tom with that ball on the side, 
on the left side cushion, which he may elect to move, probably will. And does. That's. Mm, so it just dipped back towards the, the cushion again. And uh, maybe just touched a finger mark or something. It just seemed to just take a little roll to the, to the left. I think it's just still on, but mm, I don't know. Oh, from the overhead, it looks horrible. Main camera, it looks like there's there's a chance to yeah. drop that in, but yeah, when you see it from this angle, I'm I'm not convinced at all. I mean, he could, if he doesn't think it goes, he can take it long. He could also leave an angle on the one at the bottom of the table to give it another nudge, but I think he, he thinks it will go in. No, that's a big mistake. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big, big error in judgment from Tom. It really is. That's a huge let off because of everything we've just been talking about for Aaron. I know it's only frame one, but it's important to punish that error, make Aaron think about it from Tom's perspective, keep him in, keep him down if there is any sort of hangover from previous matches, whereas he's just been let free here. And you just, the confidence he'll get, not from playing well, but from the the fact that Tom didn't punish him will be huge. I think that's the most 50-50 game for me, and I think they're all tight. I yeah. should say that, I really do, but I think yeah. I just couldn't. I think I would give Dylan the edge because he's been there and, and, and achieved a little bit more in, in the game. Obviously, Sean Story will have the edge over Cormac, but Cormac's certainly got no uh, no fear of reputations or anyone that's won before, and, and Neil and Rob is the one I'm, I'm looking at going which one would you even would, would the book he's given edge to would yeah. I give an edge to yeah absolutely I mean, I mean there's only one of those matches that's, that's, that's one sided in terms of you know how a bookmaker would price it and that's this game everything else is really tight what an opportunity for all these guys they just have this obstacle in Tom they'll, they'll all be they'll all be um wishing Aaron on here do you think they do you think they would ever say that though do you think like the winner of this match plays the winner of Dave Hogan and, and Dylan Leary do you think either of them would ever go do you know what? I really do want um, Aaron to win this match if you got them all seven players that are left if you interviewed them all every single one of them would say I don't care who I play you know I'm good enough to beat anybody but in in private in their room they'll all be willing Aaron to win this I agree completely. I really, <laughs> really do. I think, and and to be honest, I think they're foolish if they do. <laughs> if they don't. Really, you've got a guy that's won nearly twice as many titles as the the next man on the tour. He's won nine. I think uh, Chris Melling's won five. So that gives you an idea. And, you know, that and that's all happened in the space of a couple of years because yeah. he wasn't on the tour to start with, and he took a, a year or so to win his first title. So he, yeah. he's absolutely you know the best player in the world right now. There's no, not really much debate on that. You know, we, we, we've had this conversation for, for years, talking about the, the greatest of all time, and, you know, it always comes down between between Mick and Gareth. You know, there's there's arguments on both sides, but I, I honestly believe you, we'll look back in 10 years and there'll be one clear person for me, and that'll be Tom. I just, I really believe that. I mean, he's just sublime at the moment. Yeah, I, I'll, I'm absolutely with you there. I think there's absolutely lots of... You know, I love the debate. I love the argument. It's great fun. If you, you know, in the right spirit, it's absolutely great fun. But if you're not putting Tom in your conversation right now, because he is right there, yeah. I, I really believe that. I mean, yeah, I know you're looking at, at Mick with you know, six world titles and, and Gaz with four, and, and Tom's got two. But world titles aren't the full story. Yeah. What what Tom's doing in this era, in this generation, what he's done with Ultimate Pool so far is outrageously good. Yeah to do it consistently in this field he's just he's just head and shoulders at the moment and uh, he's just found his stride I mean a, a, and it's a it's an absolute sell for for, for anybody you know who, who questions whether practice really does make a difference you know um, Tony Olgate if we had a conversation with him it's a different game today and it's a, it's a more level playing field because of that the fact that he's dominating in a more level playing field is ridiculous yeah, I think it makes it, it. It is interesting, and I love that because it it is a more level playing field because it's the pockets play a bit more generous. The take the cloth, the balls, it it becomes an easier game to potentially make 
break finishes and there's plenty of players you know you go down the challenger series you'll, you'll pick out a hundred players that could put together a three four five on the trot against you but can you do that consistently match in match out and can you do that against the best players in the world and and it makes it harder to to separate yourself from the field and yet as you say tom has done it so impressive and he's in with another opportunity here interesting to see he's gone back to the front ball break finished the last match with the cut break Pretty good shape here. He's got to work hard with the cue ball over the next few shots, but they all balls go, so he's a good chance to get himself in front for the first time. I think he wanted to be a touch straighter here. So he could run across and take the one over the right hand side next, but probably now gonna well he is gonna have to leave that until last. And it's a that's an okay angle. I mean it just needs to get above the red. Um, I mean it doesn't really matter what angle he's got, he could leave it either side and still come back for the eight. Lot of margin for error here. Just, just off where he needs it to be, but it's fine. Can it's just one of those back. shots that it, it's just off angle enough that the, you know, the harder he hits this, the more the cue ball runs towards yeah. the middle of the table. And yeah. It's one of those you just got to cue it in nice and nip it. Yeah. Ooh! Wow! Well. Wow! Wow! Well, wow! Well. That is a rare sight. Very, very rarely will you ever see Tom Cousins miss that in open play. It's quite a shock when you see him miss those. It's not very often. Does not miss those very often at all. And I do think it was the, it was in his mind that if he makes that centre pocket, the cue ball could just track centre table. So he was just nipping it and cueing it and happy to pinch the pocket that way, but not that much. So an incredible opportunity here for Aaron that he definitely wouldn't have expected. Already he's just not come far enough there. Don't think he was ever intending on playing these as a plant, but maybe he was. Can't imagine he would be. It's not a difficult plant, so Yeah, he's in pretty much A1 shape now. He's decelerated on a couple of shots earlier on, so he just needs to just loosen up that shoulder. With that in mind, it's a quite a nice layout to do just that. Yeah. Just get through a few shots. Yeah, he can let the cue go. Just okay. Probably would have liked another roll just to be able to stun across but very unusual queuing style it's not often you will ever see any other player using that style it works for him though doesn't it, it really does it's very unusual Two one up. 
Cheers in here. Crowd just for mates trying to GM on. Very good. Yeah, really nice connection. Solid. Sounded good when he hits it. Look at this layout. You'd love this. You can go you could go both colour sets here and, and not really worry too much though. Laid out lovely. Probably historically one of the weaker parts of his game, the break, and uh, he's kind of got this hybrid break that he uses now. He uses that heavy break cue. It does work for him. He's got pretty consistent, pretty consistent break. Not quite the power of some of the other players, but it's um, very often that cue ball tracking right back up the centre of the table. When he's playing well, he does time it well. Yeah, maybe not the power of a few others, but if you get that solid strike like he did just there, we talked about the, the perfect conditions they get to play in. You don't need extreme power these days. You just want to get that real good quality on that front ball, and, and he really can explode. Yeah, when we saw John McAllister breaking against Melling yesterday, it was, um, it was probably 50% of yeah. the power that he can generate. Prime example of yeah. it, yeah, that quality and that timing and just and then they just you watch them just just absolutely fly around the table from them. More important than trying to hit it a million miles an hour. Well it I mean if you can get layouts like this it makes the game easy. Just needs that to travel, you just looking at it just concerned for a second but he's okay. Just come far enough. I thought he was going to leave the one at the bottom for his last ball. I thought he was going to try and get to where he is now on this line. There's more room than it looks from the main camera. Yeah. Uh, and then you just on and off and onto the eight ball. I agree. Whereas now he's swinging around. I mean, he's still not going to have any issues, but he just has to play an extra shot. Yeah, I, I was with you. I mean, he would have just played the shot he's just played and uh, would have been nicely on the eight. A little bit more work to do. Nice. Ball's going to be under pressure because he's just over hit this one. Yeah. I mean, it was a big margin of error to play into, but now he's got a much longer pot. I mean, if, if the cue ball's at the top of that white line, this is unmissable. He should get it, but there's some pressure on this shot. Lovely. Huge. But dry. Again, massive and dry. Jumps the cue ball off the bed of the table, and uh, yeah, just one awkward red. And I wonder if that red would go off the yellow. It's one of those. It's that tight to the cushion. whether you can just play it inside that yellow to drop it in. If he can, well, I think he's decided that he can because I, I mean, you could definitely make a case for either, but my preference would definitely be reds there. It was just that one ball that's just above the knuckle. He obviously felt that it wouldn't go off the yellow, so. But I think the, the yellow at the furthest up the table, I think that passes to top left. Ah, well, that definitely helps then. Yeah, and I think that makes yellows the set as he is for Aaron which is the important part yeah it doesn't it doesn't look like it's the full pocket but I think it does go yeah I was looking at that ball in bump thinking it, it didn't go and that was the, kind of swayed me towards the, the reds bit. As you say, if that goes, then it's fairly routine. Yeah, this is the key shot, though, for him, isn't it? If he can yeah. Get on to the next ball. I don't, I don't think the plant's a great option no. because the yellow that he plays could go behind the reds. It would, would, not, would want to get on the one nearest the top right corner pocket. Yeah, key to the frame in this shot. Uh, yeah. 
absolutely ball in hand. I, think, I know he's hampered, but he's only dropping it in. Yeah, he, he used the the, um, the cushion nicely there, just to to widen that angle, and then you're kind of coming into the into the area. It gives you much more margin of error. If you come straight up and down the table, it just decreases that margin of error. It's a really good lesson for any club players. Just come into the line. down on it <laughs> to see whether it goes in the middle yeah you thought you'd know that before he played the shot mm. maybe it's a little bit tight but I assumed it went yeah, yeah he's playing it so it must do I guess he's just checking the line just goes in off the far jaw Well, well. I can almost hear the cheers coming from the other quarterfinalist rooms as they're tuning <laughs> in. <laughs> <It's Yeah. laughs> Go on, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolute monster of a break. Oh, the eight ball's just gone a little bit awkward. And actually, is there an easy opener? He's got the yellow to top left. I'm not sure there's much else here. This could have been this could have been an easier start. Yeah, you, once you've made a couple of balls and you know that well, you're expecting a better chance than this. Four one up. Do you want to chase one? There's no option to take reds, which then just brings that question over the eight. I mean, it will. He can play the short position on that on that eight and pot it to the right corner. That that was always going to be a key shot. And he's on the yellow to right centre. He is on the yellow down the table. I can't see how he'd take that one on. But where's he going off the one to right centre? I'm not sure he can go anywhere. No. I think that. The yellow is just pushed over to the right-hand side. It will pass into the top right, so he gives himself a chance. Oh, he did well to hold that really well. He used the whole pocket. He just pushed it to far knuckle just to kill the cue ball. Will both of these yellows pass? I mean, it, if he can... I don't know if he's got an angle to, to get across. I'm not sure he has. Just no, he's just a little bit straight here. I was just wondering if the one next to the red, if it passes the red at the top, if it goes cushion first and gets it, it opens the pocket for the other one. Yeah, so it's going to be the it's going to be the top one of the two. But he's going to have to. He's going to have to. He's digging really deep here, isn't he? Yeah, he's super odds against them for me, getting out from this position needs to cue this really well. Oh, he played the double. Yeah. <laughs> but where's he going from I here? No idea. He's on the yellow bottom left, but you're going straight into the red. Yeah. And then we've got no shot on the, the eight ball. I <laughs> still think he's super long odds. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, he, he's clearly just tried to finish straight there so he can top it through. Well, he's left himself a double, but it's one of those doubles that he's going to have to hit it hard to straighten it up because he's just off angle. May he be forced? I don't think. I think he may have to double it to the middle. Well, that's what he just looked at, wasn't it? But it's, it's, the line is super tight, very narrow. Massive shot. No. So oh, that would have been special. What an effort. That would have been very special. Wouldn't it ever? So close. I mean, 
while Tom will not take too long over this clearance. You don't expect any mistakes here. I didn't expect any so far, but he's made a couple. Those two, the two reds could have split just slightly better. Now he's got a bit of a thin cut, but navigates it well, and he's back in A1 position. Can we be critical of Aaron for taking on that finish? I mean, we said at the start it's a it's a tough layout. You know, you're four-one up. Last thing you want to do is chase a bad one, make it easy for your opponent. I mean, he was certainly less than 50-50 to make that finish. Yeah. Should, should you then turn it down? And I'm not saying there was a good safety option, but maybe try and mess the table up some more. Make you know dra drag the frame out a little while. Maybe wait, try and out match play Tom. I don't know. I just think I think it was the the scoreboard in a way I think if it if it was three each he doesn't take that on he, he's 4-1 and he feels you know he's played well so far and he thinks if I can get this you know it could be the killer blow the problem is it was his break he t he's chased it not yeah. got it and yeah. now he's gifted Tom a frame yeah. and I know he's missed a couple from this sort of situation already today but he's not going to miss here and, and he has the next break so all of a sudden it can be 4-3 and the match feels very different mm. Whereas if he, even if he slowed it down there, lost the frame over five, six, seven, eight minutes, and it was, you know, back and forth, maybe it doesn't give Tom momentum. I don't know. It's it's a difficult one to yeah, say. Yeah. Easy I, to say, sit here in hindsight and say, yeah. well, shouldn't have taken on, but yeah. I don't know. And Tom is cut breaking. He has changed. He did this in his last match. He did it in his last match after making a break clearance. He got frustrated because it was a tricky layout. He's forced into um, he's forced into red series, and he has to just give him where the eight balls landed. Yeah, but he's got three bad reds. Yeah, yeah, this is a mess. And uh, unless he can find a way to to develop that eight, I mean, he could possibly squeeze the plant to make it a three-ball plant. The yeah. eight ball looks like it's in the way. Yeah, but it, that would certainly solve one part of the issue and possibly open up the other so then mm. it would only be the one directly below the eight ball yeah oh, he's come back for the one over the pocket so he'll be trying to move some balls here and reset this top end of the table and see if he gets a better chance yeah yeah he's going to put some pace into this try and break up break out everything here's Rona watching on He's uh, got sights set on a more success with Northern Ireland over the course of the next couple of weeks. There it is, that red just below the bulk climb past the other one. Tom's having a look now. If it does, then he's got a sniff. If it doesn't, he's got the option of doubling now. that he's taken that on he must think that the um, the red passes I mean he could go the inside first but then it's makes it a little bit more difficult to get on the other ball doesn't look like it passes though so I think he probably, probably has to he's got an angle here to to screw up into it but he's landed I think he'd rather have been straight. Mm. That bump hasn't helped him. He's still on it. But he's got to play a good shot to get nicely onto the next ball. Yeah. Not ideal. Still not ideal got the one to middle but it's the cue ball's running away it could kill it off the top cushion and come back down I think he's I mean, he, he does have the option to take the one to bottom left but I think he's forced into playing this one to middle bounce off the top cushion and back down just digging into it increases the difficulty
played it well. Not dissimilar to the one that he missed earlier. Slightly easier. Yeah, it felt easier just because he could queue through it yeah. rather than have to sort of nip it. But still, it was a surprise to see him miss earlier and no surprise to see this one right in the heart of the pocket. And a very good finish. Tom Cousins gets back within one. Needs a ball, otherwise this match could well be turning momentum-wise and he hasn't got one, although this is messy. This is very messy. Yeah, you feel like he's he's been punished for rolling the dice earlier and uh, it shows how quickly that, maybe just that slight error in judgment and deciding to go for that, how quickly the, the match can turn from 4-1 up. Now Tom with, well... Obviously a very messy table, but uh, he's at the table. I think he will be over the moon to be at the table. I think he might have a decent chance here on red. My first thought was the same as you, this is messy, but if that yellow-red is a plant, then to top right, that is, then can you sort of float off the, the other red and sort of into the yellow, pop that red into play and, and pop the red? Now, maybe not, because if I was to play that shot, I would have wanted to keep the one he's just played on the table as yeah. a ball to potentially be on. Yeah. So I think he has a different plan. Yeah. I agree. I think you, you definitely want to play that early if uh, if it does go. It looks it looks to be just set to the to the to the top knuckle, but one of those if you play at the right pace it would drop. So as you say, Tom's got a different plan here. Hmm. Well, it has to be the shot he plays now, surely. Uh, was he planning double and then into the, the red and yellow, perhaps? I think he's come a touch too far up the table. That's a horrible double. I think I think he has to play the shot we were talking about. Just come off the face of the red into the plant. He's looking at it. Definitely just, just have to make it, I think. It, it's set to the top knuckle. Is this any good? Yeah. yeah, you can get through to the red. But still got the one on the cushion to contend with. May have to double that. It's going to take it long. Big shot now. Brilliant shot, back to back from Tom. Just makes this look so easy. Needs to get the cue ball out, so he's just going to screw straight back. Off the side cushion and pretty much perfect. I mean, another, another roll would have been ideal to... For each, I mean, how this game has changed. If Aaron does go on to lose his game, he will look back at that frame at 4-1 and think, what could I have done differently? Well, this time, the cut break goes horribly wrong. And this is a big chance for... Aaron Davies to get back in front. We can talk about his decision making at 4 1 up, taking on a tough finish. He's had to sit there and think about it for two and a half frames. Now it's time to, to show us what you've got again here. Get back in front and have the next break. Yeah, this is going to say a lot about his mindset and his character now. When you're playing the best player in the game in this situation, you've got to be saying to yourself, or he shouldn't be saying to himself he should be focusing on what he's doing but back of his mind he should be thinking next time Tom plays a shot he needs to be 6-4 down yeah just a just a 
just a bit tricky. The, the yellow just above the two reds that he's pointing his cue at now, the one that's nearest this end of the table. That's the problem ball on the table. So that could be he's looking at giving it a giving it a nudge now. I wasn't convinced that that should have been the target ball. I personally would have preferred to see him go and nudge the red because if he nudges the red out of the way, it opens the it opens the pocket. Hitting it the way he did, he was in danger of pushing it into trouble. I mean, he's pushing it onto the cushion, but he could have pushed it towards the red. touch. Still needs one really good shot though, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is he can pick his he can pick his angle now. He's going to use the one to top left to get onto the ball at the bottom of the table. Well, you could use either. I think I well, maybe he's just not got the right angle to leave. I, I prefer this. I'll come down the left side of the table, but as I say, you can you can pick your angle. That's um, that's good. Who uses side cushion now? Screw across. This could go wrong. Needs to judge it well. Lovely. Yeah, very good. Just that turn off the cushion just to help, but it wouldn't have mattered if he was flat on the cushion with the eight ball. Sitting pretty. Super clearance from Aaron Davis. Huge shot again. Oh, he nailed it. Disaster. How unfortunate there, just getting kicked in off. Absolutely. Look at this layout. That's the best layout of the match. Oh my goodness. The cue ball was tracking nowhere near that pocket, just got kicked in off. And you could see from our, the look on Aaron's face exactly what he thought about that. Because if that cue ball remains on the table, He's going 6-4, almost certainly. And he's just handed over a bunch of dollies to Tom, who's going to level the match. Just got to roll further than he wanted there. Actually, the no, he's he's fine. I think the didn't realise that the the red is uh, the yellow he's just about to take went into that pocket. I didn't know if it passed the yellow. So he was in A1. Oh, oh, he hasn't, has he? He might have done. He has done. Can you believe it? Was that a kick? Did that throw wider than he was expecting because of the kick, or was it just a bad shot? That's unbelievable. Extension cold. I mean, it's that close to the red. He can't even he can't even turn it over. I don't think. May just be able to. No, he's having a go cushion first. You still expect him to get close on this shot, but oh, what a moment for Aaron Davies here to strike and hurt Tom Cousins. That was either a kick or a very bad error from Tom, and whichever it is, it's going to really hurt him. Aaron's actually unfortunate. These <laughs> the cue ball's gone where it has. This could have the cue ball could have easily been in the middle of the table and and left a simple opener. Actually, he's just got a bit of a, a bit 
bit of a tricky one. He's going to play safe because of that. Can't blame him. But if you let Tom back to the table, you are risking things. I mean, that's probably about as good as he could have got. I don't know how you find a pot on the yellow here because just about every pocket's covered that they could go into. He's going to bend it. Oh. Oh dear. Dear me, no. And the yellow goes. Oh, oh no. Right. Oh but dear. That's a risky run. You do you you do run that risk. I mean, he was in a it was difficult for Aaron, but I mean, you can't legislate for for that really. I mean, out and out fluke. I just come back to the fact that Tom was pretty lucky to leave that cue ball where he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two two bits of fortune really. If if he leaves um if he leaves Aaron any oh my goodness me, I just I cannot believe that. That's, that's three shots, I'm just... He's had another touch of run here. The yellow blocks the red. Yeah. I know that Aaron's still massive favourite for the frame, but it's another touch of fortune because it's not just a quick, clean run to the line here for Aaron. No. All of a sudden, he's got to you know, work it out. Yeah. And, um, and what does he do here? I mean, does he... Is he going to go for another snooker? It looks like he is. He's not dissuaded from previous shot again this could be so much easier he really does have to work out what's going to happen with this yellow at the bottom of the table it's no good it is and again Surely can, Tom can't do this twice in a row. It won't be a comfortable feeling in his chair for Aaron. He should have never left this one cushion escape. Tom can play across the face of this. He's in a million miles away. Yeah, time to put this one to bed now for Aaron. Absolutely. Just the little ding in the background was a signal for the 15 second shot clock. Just over nine minutes left on the clock. But Aaron Davis four balls away from the hill. judge that well that was another one you know play that just a, an inch to the left and he's in all kinds of trouble simple eight ball Davies on the hill Does cut break with more power than most, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> if I <laughs> great reaction from it, Tom there. <laughs> if I played that shot, the cue ball would end up three rows back. <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely be in the crowd. <laughs> Eight ball the problem for this finish. A little bit tight in the in the break area of the table. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it goes down now. We said earlier he likes to deal with those problems right from the outset. Yeah. He does it He does it quicker than most. I, I don't think a lot of players may well have played that shot, but I don't think it would be the, the most likely acro across the top players, I think. A lot of players kind of leave it later. He goes straight after it.
making both air does not hurt him at all it's the lovely angle you almost played that in a way to to make both very quick yeah. and very much needed yeah. for the number one Aaron would love a ball and an open table second prize would be lots of clusters to run the clock down but it's all about making a ball here not oh, the cue ball though again. not the cue uh, ball and he wants clusters oh, and there isn't any oh dear uh, it's going to be a tough few minutes in the chair here for Aaron Davies as Tom Cousins has an opportunity to tie the scores up and he would have a break in the decider and there is time on the clock. Be a very uncomfortable feeling right now for Cyborg. Not even a, a frustrated look there from Aaron. I mean, in the last frame you saw what he thought about it because he was unlucky to get kicked off but when you when you screw it straight back into the pocket there, there's it's just, it's all you. I mean, there's there's nothing unlucky about it really. Unforgivable. It's going to be another quick one. Yeah, does he take the one to bottom right here? Yeah, leave the one that he's nearest to to his connection to the eight ball. All connects together well if he lands roughly straight in on the one at the bottom of the table here yeah yeah it just needs to top this through release the cue ball and he's decided to stand across landed on the cushion that's not ideal just going to be jacking up now has to stun the cue ball back so <laughs> that's not how we played it no. hand up and he'll apology. take it Davis, 4-1 up, peg back to 4-all, then goes to 6-4, and now it's a hill-hill game. Aaron praying for a chance. Oh no, it's so big isn't it? Aaron will not get the chance, Tom yeah. Cousins has turned up at the right time here. That is two brilliant cut breaks at the right time for him. How does he manage to navigate his way through these matches, yeah. even when he's in and trouble? But these are the things you can't quantify with, yeah. with Tom Cousins. You know, we talk about the volatility in the game. We talk about how tough it is to consistently win because everyone can play a level. But, you know, in all those tournaments that, Tom, that Tom's won, he, he feel like every single one of them has had a match like this where yeah. maybe he could have been knocked out. Yeah. Not to, you know, Aaron made his mistakes early. And he made, you know, obviously the decision at 4 1 was an interesting one, but he's played really well in this match after getting himself, you know, going in the first yeah. couple of frames. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't had the opportunity to win the match. It just hasn't been, it's not come for him. Such a cruel game. It, it really is. Three balls away for Tom Cousins doing. Once again, what he so normally does, find a way to win. He's made more mistakes in the match as well. Mm. Just been a, one of those games Aaron's not been able to, to make the breakthrough and get the victory. But it, Tom Cousins with his eight ball. Those two in-offs. Two in offs, decision at 4 1. Yep. Yeah. Massive. The top cat has done it again. Tom Cousins wins the quarter final and moves on to the semis. Once again, he is into another semi final here with Ultimate Paul and the Pro Series. Eyeing up title number 10. Tom Cousins is tracking.